From ancient times up to the early 20th century, a disc throwing competition involved a rather bulky individual attempting to throw a weighty discus as far as possible. There wasn't anything graceful or lofty about it. Distance was the only criteria for winning. Today's freestyle flying disc competitions are judged on style, grace, and complicated maneuvers like tipping, hoop roll, and toothbrush. The plastic disc, instead of being pulled to the ground, defies gravity like a flying saucer. Chip Bell started throwing the flying disc one morning years ago as a surfer waiting for the waves to come up. I started getting into Frisbee when the waves were flat, I'd play Frisbee. And it turned out that somebody asked me to go to a Frisbee competition, and that's where my direction ended up going for the last 12 years. As a boy, Danny Sullivan had the good fortune of having a neighbor in the toy business who introduced him and his siblings to disc throwing. I started playing out in our big front yard with my brothers and sisters and realized that, you know, an under the leg catch and a trick throw was pretty simple. And then by the time I was 18, I was out on the national circuit competing with my best friends. In 1957, the Whammo Company introduced the first commercial flying disc. But the penchant for throwing a disc is believed to have started back in the 20s when Yale College students discovered the fun of throwing metal pie tins from the nearby Frisbee Company. Nearly everyone has tried throwing a disc at one time or another. Freestyle simply defines creative movement with a spinning disc. Tournaments are made up of events which involve a variety of choreographed and improvised routines. To be a proficient disc thrower, it takes a lot of work and a lot of practice. I pushed myself the last few years in exercising at a higher elevation, which you know when you come down to sea level, your blood's just flowing and you've got all this oxygen ready to go off and feel like I'm breathing turbo air down here. And I think that's some of the reasons for my um, success in the past year and a half and winning almost every beach tournament that I've gone to in the last couple of years. It's a glorious beach day and Danny and Chip get to the beach early to prepare for today's competition. The fake nails we put on and some of the ways we slick the disc help you to become a better spinner of the disc. Greetings, Rich. The tournament gets underway, and before the sun sets, each participant will compete in several team and individual events. Whichever team accumulates the most points will be the winner of the Beach Bowl tournament. The individual with the highest score is the tournament's overall winner. The airbrush dash and the pairs competition are Danny and Chip's strongest freestyle events. The pairs competition is judged on the level of difficulty and individual style. Each routine is judged for its presentation, execution, and difficulty. You can judge the difficulty by how much the player is putting him or herself at risk. Are they sending the disc up and spinning around a lot? Are they moving the disc around underneath their legs? And pulling the disc from underneath their legs in a consecutive way. If they do a lot of those in a row, that's a very difficult move. Art Coddington and his freestyle partner Dave Lewis are two of Danny and Chip's strongest competitors. They've been working on a routine real tightly. They know these beaches. They've competed recently on the US Pro Tour. They're gonna come here, they're gonna be ready, they're gonna be competitive. Many freestyle events are judged by fellow competitors. Players are the best qualified judges because they know what all the moves are and they know what's hard and what's done well. It is getting windy and the tide is coming up. Now it's much more difficult for players to keep their disc under control in these conditions. Today we'll be really concentrating on watching the wind, seeing how the wind's gonna shift, if it's gonna be continuing in one direction. If it picks up real strong, it'll change our game a little bit. Danny and I work real well in the winds, but we'll have to work with it. But Danny and Chip are able to manage the wind and take first place in the pair's preliminary round. Both of them have great flexibility, and, and both of them also have years and years of experience playing in tournaments. So they're always a dangerous team. Now on to the individual airbrush dash prelim. The Airbrush Dash is an event in which all participants race against the clock for the fastest time spinning the disc into the wind. Danny makes good time. That's the time to beat. But Chip runs a hard race and takes first place at the end of the round. 
It happens every year. I'm always head to head with my own team partner in either a one on one or airbrush dash. But somebody has to, there has to be one person that's going to win. It's never been a tie. The wind has died down in time for the pair's freestyle final round. Arthur and David impressed the judges with their dynamic performance, making them strong contenders for first place. Defending champion, Danny Sullivan and Chip Bell. Chip and Danny know they must do some dazzling maneuvers to outperform their opponents. Chip and Danny win the Paris Freestyle event for the fifth year in a row. The victorious partners turn into rivals for the Airbrush Dash final round. Chip's disc hits an air pocket and he loses control. Danny passes Chip and wins the race. For the second year in a row, Danny is the tournament's overall winner. Chip takes second place, and together, as a team, they are the 14th Beach Bowl Tournament champions. It seems Chip and Danny have the spinning touch. Coming up next, we're going to see what Alaskan loggers do in their spare time.